Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church on this Ascension Sunday, the Sunday where we celebrate our Lord ascending into heaven, promising his disciples that he would send upon them the Holy Spirit. Of course, this is also Memorial Day weekend, and so uh, we want to extend a kind word to all who have lost loved ones in the service of our nation And also, we want you to know that we hold all of uh, our service members in our prayers at all times here at Trinity. We welcome you to worship this morning, and as we begin, we do have several announcements that we want to share with you today. Uh, The first is that we have something new happening this morning at 1015. We will have another coffee hour, uh, a Zoom meeting coffee hour, hosted online Uh, by our own Hal Mishkin, so if you'd like to join in that this morning, uh, just look at your Constant Contact newsletter, and you should have uh, received the Zoom information to come on to that meeting. We also are doing uh, that coffee hour again on Thursday evening at 7.30 p.m., so watch again for that Zoom meeting invitation. Our confirmation fellowship uh, time continues on Wednesday evenings at 6.30, And this week, we also will be starting uh, a new venture in our adult class. We will be uh, doing a study of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. That's on Wednesday evening at 7.30. Just another shout-out also to uh, our generous supporters who keep uh, bringing uh, food items to our pantry so that uh, our hungry neighbors can eat, and to our special volunteers who serve here at our friend's kitchen. We are so very grateful for your service and your support. I don't think any of us uh, can have an idea of how much it means to those who are hungry 
to be able to come here and, and receive from us the food that they need. So thank you for your support in all of those things. Pastor Bruce, do you have a couple of announcements this morning? I'd like to just share with you a little bit about what's been happening here at Trinity. Our own Susan Rutledge, Director of Youth Ministry, has been so active and involved with our young people and families through the computer, the Zoom program. They have Sunday school at 9.30 and then again at 11 o'clock each Sunday. They have confirmation on Wednesdays. She hosts a youth club. It's really a wonderful opportunity for the young people to engage our church, for we continue to be active and involved in the lives of our young people. I'd also like to mention that she has been busy with the Youth Ministry Committee in coming up with new and creative ways of being church together. They are planning a parking lot outdoor drive-in movie. So that'll, that'll be coming soon along with a virtual treasure hunt. They have a beautiful committee that's preparing for vacation Bible school over the summer. So we look forward to new and creative ways of being church. Speaking of that, our caring ministry continues to thrive. We meet as Stephen Ministry team uh, every other Thursday evening to, for mutual support and guidance, and it is such a wonderful opportunity for telephone ministry to reach out and to touch base with people of our congregation who might be alone or in some ways in need of an enjoyable, Christ-centered conversation. So we look forward to continuing to be the church active and engaged in the lives of our congregation in creative and meaningful ways. God bless our ministry together. Thank you, Pastor Bruce. And then finally, uh, prior to beginning our worship, you know, you've all probably heard that there have been many different calls to open houses of worship. And I just want you to know that we are going to be following the advice of our synod bishop and, of course, the health experts health experts in Suffolk County and in New York State. So we're going to be relying on science as we open, and we've put together a, a special committee that will be looking at best practices as, as our facility opens sometime uh, in the future. And so uh, as, we, as we do that, we will make sure that all of you are aware of what is happening. Uh, of course, we all want to get together at the earliest possible time, but you know, we are a gift to one another. We hold all of your lives to be precious, and we, we want to make sure that when we open, we open as safely as we can uh, to protect all of our people. Uh, life is just too precious to gamble, so we're going to do our best to rely on the, on the information that is out there that is good and solid. So thank you in all of this for your patience. Let us begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen, amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches, wisdom and strength, and honor and blessing and glory are His. 
This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor, glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia! This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia! 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world and in the end bring everything into your glory through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand, if you are able, for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city, until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On this Memorial Day, it's appropriate to consider, just for a moment, the ascension of our Lord for a Memorial Day originally was called Decoration Day. And loved ones of those who lost their lives in war would go and decorate the graves of their loved ones. Well, I love the vision of our Lord ascending unto heaven. And I pray that if you've lost a loved one in service to our country, that in your mind's eye, you could see them ascending unto the Father as well. God bless all those who have lost their lives 
for the sake of our country and the freedoms that we share. I know that this ascension is truly a time when we reflect on Jesus' glorification. For you heard in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus brought them out as far as Bethany and there before them he blessed them and while he was blessing them, he ascended. Do you realize that that all took place on that very first Easter day, the evening of that day. The whole 24th chapter of Luke is dedicated to that very special resurrection glory day. In the book of Acts, also written by Luke, it's 40 days later that the ascension takes place. A little discrepancy, perhaps. Nevertheless, there certainly are similarities that are truly important for us to take note of. One of them is the promise of Jesus to send what the Father had promised, the Holy Spirit, and the gift of of power. So I pray that we recognize that Jesus is still with us now in his church through the Holy Spirit. And that is such an important part of why the church at the first century, the very beginnings, took off and just exploded with people recognizing that Jesus Christ is the living Lord and Savior. And I hope that we can recognize that even though our Lord Jesus has gone to heaven, back to the Father at the right hand of God, that he is still with us now. Though there may be times when we wonder if God is truly with us. I wonder how many of us haven't said during this time of pandemic, what's going on? Where is God? Doesn't he hear our prayers? How can he let this continue? The whole world is in turmoil and pain. And I think that if you've ever asked those questions, you are not alone. I wonder how many of us haven't felt at times of our lives that God isn't hearing our prayers. And if you've lost a loved one, or if you're struggling having lost your job and losing your well-being and your home, you have to be saying, Lord, what's going on? I love you, and I'm praying to you, and still it keeps getting worse. Bishop Andrew Taylor from the West Coast tells the story of one of his pastor's parishioners who came to him one day and said, Pastor, this is my last time here because I've been praying and praying and I have to say, I'm sorry to say, that I feel like God doesn't hear my prayers because my daughter has been struggling and I've been praying for her for such a long time with all my heart and soul. It turns out that she had gotten mixed up with the wrong group of friends and she started partying and then she got hooked on drugs. The next thing you know, she's selling drugs to, to have some for herself and then she got arrested. And then the lawyer said that the best they could get was five years in jail. And I had been praying for her this whole time, and it just seems to be getting worse. And so if God is there, he's not listening to me, 
but I don't even know if he's real. And with that, she left, and he didn't see her for the longest time. Well, her daughter Kay did go to jail, and she didn't want to see her mom for, for quite some time, but they sent letters back and forth. And then one day, about a year later, her daughter called her mom and asked her to please come visit. And when she did, her daughter was so excited to tell her that she was clean and sober and that she had been for some time and that she's in a recovery and that she's doing well, but she needs her mom to pray for her. And with that, her mom said, I don't pray anymore. And her daughter said, Mom, you were always praying for me. I'm depending on your prayers. Weren't you praying that I would stop using drugs and get clean? Well, I am. And I need you to keep praying. I want a new life and I want to continue. Well, with that, Cassie, the mom, realized that even though she couldn't see it happening, God was active and engaged and working in and through her daughter to bring her to that place where healing can take place. And so one day, she went back to church and she said, I'm here and I want to help. Whatever I can do, I just didn't realize that God wasn't doing it in my time. God was working in his time. And I don't always understand what God is doing, but God is truly working and helping. So for us, in times like this, when we look at how difficult circumstances are and they're turned upside down. I mean, in a moment, our world completely changed and our lives and so many people's lives have been turned upside down. Can we hold on to the truth that God is with us and caring for us. And even though we can't see what's happening, that God is truly working in our best interest. I wonder if we couldn't relate to the change, those things that happen with the disciples. Do you realize that before that Easter Sunday experience, of Jesus' resurrection, that even though Jesus had told them repeatedly that the Son of Man must suffer and die and on the third day rise, they didn't understand. They weren't able to see God at work. When Jesus died on the cross, they thought it was over. Even in this 24th chapter of Luke, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, when Jesus came and started talking with them, that the disciples said, we thought that this Jesus would be the one to restore Israel. And so they were despondent and heading back to their old life. It wasn't until they experienced the risen Christ, that they were helped to understand that God opened to them the scriptures. In this gospel text for the ascension, Jesus opens their minds to understand through his resurrected nature, his Holy Spirit, and that, I think, is truly important and distinctive. That 
there was a marked change in these disciples that though prior to their experiencing the living Christ, the resurrected Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, they didn't understand. And I'm sure that there are plenty of times in our own lives when we don't understand what God is doing. But then, with their understanding, through the power of the Spirit, the risen living Lord, he blesses them. As he was departing from them, he blesses them. And they receive this peace and comfort and goodness of God in the blessing. And they were rejoicing on their way back. He also commissioned them that they are his witnesses. They're the ones who experienced the risen Lord. They're the ones that can now fully share because they fully understand what living Lord is all about. And I pray that you experience the living Lord, the Holy Spirit, Jesus present in our lives spiritually. Nevertheless, the real presence, I dare say that Jesus Christ is active in this world now and that we are called to be creative because, yes, this world has changed. It's been turned upside down. Have we recognized that in the change there is so much for us to grow? We are being shaped and molded in the midst of this pandemic and our struggle, our confusion, I pray it leads us to deeper understanding and appreciation for who God is. The disciples couldn't fathom how great and majestic his plan for creation was. But in resurrected glory, it is revealed. And this day, in the midst of such turmoil and change, can we be shaped into being the people of God as resurrection children, people of the living Lord, the risen Christ, the glorified one, and share his love in creative and new ways. Do we need this church? Yes, the church is vital. And the church is the community of believers, those who are of God's spirit, those who have Christ's love and share it. Listen to what it says in 1 John chapter 4. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God, for God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Dear friends, we are called to be a new creation, forgiven, redeemed, 
in the living Lord Jesus Christ. And we are called to proclaim the repentance and forgiveness of sins in his name and to share his love with all people. And I pray that we continue and find new ways to do just that. So God bless us on the ascension of our Lord and our commission as his witnesses, starting in Jerusalem and extending throughout the whole world. God bless us all. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, his the scepter, his the throne. Alleluia, his the triumph, his the victory alone. Songs of peaceful Zion thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, has redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, King eternal, Lord omnipotent, we own. Alleluia, born of Mary. Our great high priest here on earth, both priest and victim in the Eucharistic feast. Uplifted by the promise of hope and healing in the resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and epidemiologists who are looking for cures to the illnesses that cause so much suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable in this difficult time. Grant healing to those suffering from the COVID virus. Grant peace to those who are mourning and strength to the healers. Keep your children in safety until this pestilence passes. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant comfort and solace to those who have lost loved ones in the service of our nation. As we recall their sacrifices on this Memorial Day weekend, we await the day when the spears are beat into pruning hooks, when war is indeed a memory when no more tears are shed for the warrior and peace reigns over all the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant healing to those whose bodies are broken, whose spirits are tormented, those who are lonely and lost, the friendless and the vulnerable. We pray especially for our brothers and sisters, Bill, Walter, Eleanor, Tom, Susan, John, Wayne, Jean, Ed, John, Kristen, Maureen, Grace, Ruth, Marguerite, Stephanie, George, John, Ingrid, James, Frank, Arlene, Chrissy, Faith, Marilyn, Eric, 
Bob, Muriel, Oliver, Doris, Lori, and those we name in our hearts before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to your holy care the Plesnik and Stockton families upon the death of their sister, Vera Serezna. As you have received her into the church triumphant, so we pray that you would grant her family comfort and peace during these days of mourning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. We especially pray for those graduating from college and high school in the coming weeks. Grant to them clarity of purpose. Call them to worthy vocations and perseverance in all that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your care. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And for those of you who are at home this morning sharing in this time with us, I invite you now to embrace your family, uh, a bow of peace, a handshake, whatever it is that you can do for one another to express Christ's love for each of us. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord be with you. And with you. And now we join in the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, your your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you. Beside you to befriend you above you to watch over within you to give you peace in the name of the father son and spirit Blessing, honor, glory to the Lamb, holy, righteous, worthy is the Lamb. Death could not hold him down, for he is risen. Seated upon the throne, he is the Lamb of God. Blessing, honor, glory to the Lamb. Holy, righteous, worthy is the Lamb. 
Death could not hold him down, for he is risen. Seated upon the throne, he is the Lamb of God. Blessing, honor. Righteous, worthy is the 